Hey guys, I am really excited to bring you this specific podcast interview. You know, we released the audio of this a few weeks ago and the response was incredible. So many people reached out and said the authenticity, the vulnerability, and the, I guess the courage they heard inside of this episode was so inspiring and I couldn't agree more. So we all know that during this quarantine, period in our lives. <laughs> there have been a couple of industries that really got hit hard. We know that, for example, the travel industry, really, really rough. Restaurants, really, really rough. And in fact, food in general, really tough. So I want you to imagine something. Pretend that you're a personal chef and you go into people's homes and prepare their food for the next week. You leave your containers there, you come back a week later and you do it again. How well do you think that business is gonna do in the middle of a quarantine? I mean, would you wanna go into people's houses? Probably not, and would you want anyone in your home? Probably not. So this interview is with a guest who was in exactly that position. Her name is Chef Ramagin, and I have had so much fun working with her. For several years now, we've been in touch, we've been having such a great time working together. And I was so impressed with what she did during this quarantine. Not only did she pivot her business, you guys, she increased her revenue as a private chef during a global pandemic. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. And the way she talks about what that actually took in this interview, I think will really inspire you. And I think the other thing that you're gonna hear is the pivoting like this take something. It's not magic, it's not woo woo. It's not like you sit on you know, your couch and meditate and it just falls on your head and oh, there are all my ideas, it's done. It takes work and it takes energy. And at the very end of the interview, you're going to hear her talk about what that was really like. Chef Rama was trained at the Culinary School of America in New York City. She also trained at the French Culinary Institute. Yes, please, all the croissants for me. Thanks so much, that would be great. <laughs> right. And she also studied at the Institute for Integrative Nutrition at Columbia University Teachers College. She knows her stuff. And I've personally taken some of her classes and the food is always fantastic. My family loves it when I take a class with Chef Rama. But what you're about to hear is what it took to get here. And I think this is a story that sometimes gets skipped over. Everybody wants the reward at the end without having to do the hard work. And what I love about what you're about to hear is it's a real journey. It's a human being who's got talents and experience and expertise. And when the world stopped, she went back to her talents, her experience and her expertise and created something brand new to offer the world that honestly answered a call in the marketplace that I think hadn't been heard until now. All right, so I hope you enjoy, listen up and let's get to it. on the Game on Girlfriend podcast. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me, Sarah. This is such a huge honor. I can't even oh, tell you. <laughs> well, right back at you. Okay. I have to say, it has been so cool. How long have we known each other now? Where mm. are we? Are we six years? Uh, you're, you're right. No, a little bit more. My daughter is seven, so it's like seven years. Oh my right gosh. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. So and I think about... I'm like, she's like a marker. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you're a lifer. <laughs> that's how I, that's how I like measure my friendships, my children. I think that puts us like on a really cool trajectory of your business. Like you've it like really, really changed things since then. Yeah. It really, really, really does. I mean, there is so much to say about working with you and just being exposed to everything that you have to offer that it's oh. crazy. Well, that's nice to say, but I also think you, you have driven like a boatload of your success, the way you have constantly looked at, I think what's really cool, and we should give people a little bit of a background on yeah. where you started and how things changed. But like, one of the things I really admire about you, Rama, is you're constantly looking at like, what's going on in your own life that needs to change, right? So how is your business working inside your own lifestyle? But also what is the world asking you for? And then you always seem to meet it. Like you seem to have this incredible skill of being like, aha, I see what people need. Let me go get it for them. It's just really cool to watch. 
but let's give people context. Yes. So we start with like, where did you start your career? How did you fall in love with food and cooking? Fill us in. I love that question because it's usually pretty loaded, but I'm going to give you the Cliff Notes version of it. Um, so at a really young age, I mean, at age six, I was obsessed, which is like hospitality. Like when guests used to come over or families to come over, I loved serving. I loved cooking. I loved, you know, helping my mom in the kitchen all the time. Like that was my playground. It was like, do you want to go play outside or do you want to help me make homemade spring rolls? That was the choice. Um, so then fast forward to when it came time for all of us to choose, you know, in life, what you're going to do with college and whatnot. I never realized that cooking and the culinary world could actually be something you could do full time. You know, at that time, Emeril Lagasse just had come out with, yeah, just came out with his show and I was like, Hmm, it's not all about restaurants and it's not all about you know, being, um, owning a restaurant or a cafe as a chef, you could do other things. So I decided to explore it and go to culinary school. So I went to the Culinary Institute of America at 18. Um, usually you don't go to those type of schools, I think too young, right? Usually you go to specialized schools post, uh, bachelors. That's right. I, yeah. I knew it. I definitely knew it. I wanted wow. to be a chef. I wanted to be in an industry of service and hospitality. Um, and my mom had a huge part of it. She, she was a great cook. I mean, she worked full time and it was a different meal for dinner every night. Wow. Indian food one night to French food another night to Spanish food another night. It was like, it was surreal. It was crazy. Just being exposed to that and then traveling and, and going to culinary school, um, after school, working in the restaurants and then realizing that I have to come up with a business that serves me personally well and my future family. And so what was it? Was it like the restaurant business? That was not it. Yeah, and it was it because the of the hours. It was the hours. And honestly, it was the money too. You know, I have to be really honest as a restaurant um, employee, when you're serving $250 tasting menus, the chefs back there 20 years ago are getting paid $7 an hour. Wow. So right. it's not something that, right. you know, mm -mm. no, I love this, but not that way. Exactly. And that's what I mean. Like you have this really cool way of being like, I see this world. Mm -mm. I'm going to do it over here. And you just yes. go do it. It's amazing. Yes. Thank you. So what did you go do? So basically, um, after working the restaurants and some hotels, uh, I realized that people wanted to learn how to cook family, friends, they would ask me, Hey, you know, I know we went to culinary school. I was wondering if you know how to make this or that and you <laughs> it to me. And I was like, okay, I see there's a business. You know, I, I saw that time Macy's, I don't know if you remember, but Macy's in New York city, they had a cooking school. Up I on the do rooftop. remember that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's there right now, but it was very popular at that time. I attended a couple of those classes, you know, kind of when you're a little sneaky and you kind of <laughs> see what's going on. And I was like, oh my gosh, these classes have 30 people in them. People want to learn how to cook. And then people are asking me, I need to start a business based on cooking classes. So I found a really cute nail salon, gutted it out in Bern County, New Jersey. And I opened up a cooking studio, eight weeks pregnant with my first daughter. Amazing. And, Amazing. Um, that's kind of like where it all happened. That's, that's really where it happened, where I don't even, I wasn't even planning my pregnancy or having kids, but because my kids came first or at the same time, I always design my business choices like that with my family and my personal life in mind. Yeah. And you do it well. I mean, I think, listen, I left the corporate world for that. Right. But it took me a couple of years to sort of figure out, okay, well, how the heck am I ever going to make as much money as I made in corporate? Right. But I'm not going to be out of the house 16 hours a day anymore. Like finding that took me a couple of years. It's why I teach other people how to do it. Right. So it's not right. so hard. And I feel like for you, it just was this, you're like, you have this fight for yourself that I think is so cool. I think it's such a great example to other entrepreneurs to be like, go break it, go break all the rules <laughs> and, yeah. and make it work. And I think you really lead with your family and your kids. And I think that just shines through in what you do. It's really Thank cool, you. Rama. I'm glad yeah. you noticed that because I was wondering, you know, it's like, is it too much? Are my kids too involved in my business? Is this not unprofessional? Is this not professional? Is something you're no. supposed to do, you know? 
Yeah, no, I think it's great. I mean, listen, my daughter does the podcast intro, right? I think it's actually, you know, I think it's good though. I think it's great. One, for our kids to see their moms working that hard, you know what I mean? And what we do and that we bring money into the home doing what we love and what we're good at, right? I think it's so cool for them to see that actually. And again, break break the rules, like break the industry, break the way things are supposed to be done. And that's how innovation happens. Exactly. Which speaking of, (laughs) so here you are. So you had your in-person, um, yeah, studio where you taught classes, you were doing all that and you close that down when you needed to spend more time with the kids. Right. And And you started your personal chef. Third child. Yeah. When I was probably my third child in five years, um, I restructured the business where I didn't want an actual studio, like a physical space. So went to people's houses for private chefing and cooking classes in people's houses. And that worked out personally a lot better for myself Got it. and for the kids. And then, and then COVID hit. COVID hit. Yeah. So and I'm assuming going into people's houses to ooh. cook for them, not, not so much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not no, so much not at that so point, much. right? I think I was... I don't know if this is correct, but I'm assuming I was one of the first to be cut in people's lives, you know, Mm. having a chef come to my house, cook food, which is so intimate. Oh no, that's dangerous. No way. Yeah. Coming in. So that just kind of went down the drain in 24 hours. (laughs) You're like, that was like Insta, Insta shut down, right? Yeah. Exactly. And so Well, let's talk about, I want to talk about the mental piece of that, right? Because obviously being an entrepreneur, so much of what we do is mental training, right? It's like getting your head on straight so you can take actions that actually work for you instead of acting out of fear and freaking out. And at a time when the whole, let's be honest, when the whole world was freaking out, you've now lost all clients within 24 hours. Yes. Yes. What was your mental game? Like, how did you set your mind right to be able to make the decisions you made, which we'll talk about in a second because they were extraordinary. How did you do that? Honestly, Sarah, at that point when, (sighs) when it was officially considered a pandemic and obviously, you know, we couldn't do anything, go out of the house, make this happen. I, you know, like every human being, you are bummed, you get sad, you think your life is over Mm. in a 24 hour period. I'm going to shut down. I'm not going to run my business anymore. Honestly, I looked at myself and I was like, after 11 years, well, almost 11 years at that point, am I really going to give up right now after having three children, three pregnancies, breastfeeding the kids, not taking maternity leaves, um, you know, family stuff going on, closing a studio, finding a space temporarily, all these hurdles, like, like you say, like when you think about the 10 hardest things that you've done in 10 years, Mm -hmm. all of them popped up at that moment. And it was no way. I am not going to let this go. Like I'm not want to be chef, go down the drain. I'm going to figure something out and make it happen. I love that. I just went full throttle. Any idea that came to mind, I text to myself. I used my notes app. I wrote myself an email, you know, whatever it is. I just, I just knew that I had to do something. I was not going to give up. It's like, you know, you hanging off a, a monkey bar and you see your fingers slipping you know what I mean? Yes. When you're a kid yes. and you're like, oh, I'm not going to let go. That was me. I'm not going to let go. So, And you did it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that is, and that is um, the characteristics of someone who's got grit, right? That's, I mean, that's what that is. It's that stick to itiveness. It's a getting up after you fall. That old yes. phrase, everybody says, it doesn't matter how many times you fall down. It matters how many times you get up. Like, exactly. but that literally is what you did. I mean, the despair, like, and the human despair, right? Like the, like, oh my God, are we all going to be okay? So there's like the, the larger version of that. And then what you had to do internally, you're you're taking care of your family. Oh my gosh, I love this business, all those things. So for you to do that, I think it really points to one of the things I hope everybody listening really takes from that is we cannot control what life throws at us, right? I say that all the time, but this specific conversation we're having right now is that example. There, you had no control over that. Like you didn't ask for that to happen. No, of course. You had no, no control, did, right? right? Yeah. And it's yeah. like, okay, so yeah. this is the reality. Right. It really sucks right now. What right. am I doing? Right. <laughs> it's just, exactly. it's just awesome. And exactly. I hope, I hope people take from this that they can, that if you can do that, they can do that. And it's, it really is that mental game, right? 
It really is. And I think being honest and real with yourself and putting out the cards down like they are, not sugarcoating what's going on, not not being in denial, but actually looking at it, you know, at that point, obviously with the pandemic and it's still going on, but at that point in March is just being real with yourself and knowing what you're capable of doing. Mm. So it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to go ahead and find a new studio space right now. That's not smart, obviously. Or I'm going to create a course from scratch. I thrive on just doing it and sometimes doing it imperfectly, as you know. Massive imperfect action, right? It's the only way to build a business, honestly. That's what, that's what it was based on in the beginning. It was, I didn't let perfection come into this. I just, I just rolled with it. I'm You're like, so people, great. Give me Venmo. Sorry, I don't have a sales page right now. <laughs> and you did it. So let's talk about what did you do? How did you pivot? So you're this in-person, intimate, private chef. Right. Business evaporates overnight. Right. What'd you do? Teaching is kind of what I started Wanna Be Chef on. That's the foundation. So all my classes that I taught in the last 10 years kind of um, became something where I knew I could teach people virtually, right? We'd heard of Zoom, obviously. <laughs> a lot of people use it at that time. I said, well, why don't I take a, a platform like Zoom and teach live classes and have people come and, you know, sign up and cook with me live so yeah. they can learn something new. They can cook for themselves and their family and they can have fun while doing it, you know, like kind of going out to a class or going out to a dinner, but kind of bring that experience at home. Yeah. So I started teaching people virtual classes in real time cooking classes in real time. Mm -hmm. They're so good, by the way. You guys, okay, so we have to be totally transparent here. Yes, we I do, think we I do. signed up for every class you offered. Um, <laughs> I, think I, I think you have. I because, think you have. oh my gosh, they were so great. And I will say, I mean, Rama, I think what you did that was so brilliant. And for anybody who's listening who's still struggling with how to deal with the pandemic or how to pivot or if there's parts of your business that aren't recovering properly or the way that you would hope they would. I think what you did, Rama, that was so great is what you offered hit so many different needs. So right. I know for me personally, as somebody who watched you do this and was standing next to you while you did this, it was so exciting to watch you just grasp this and get it. And what I know for me is, you know, I have two autoimmune diseases, so I was really nervous to go out. My husband was the only one leaving the house at that time because we didn't know how to deal with this yet. And so I'd give him the grocery list you sent. Mm -hmm. He would come home. He was always excited. He knew every night that there would be a class, right? So there was that fun and anticipation at a time when everybody's home all the time and it starts to get boring and people are eating like crap because everybody's right. nervous and whatever was frozen, you could just grab and run with. And so you right. offered healthy food. Social interaction, what I loved about it too, is that at a time when people were feeling lonely, we could go hang out with each other and make dinner together. Yes. But be totally yes. safe at the same time. So you hit. <laughs> so we have nutrition, we have companionship, we have excitement, we have um, the experience of intimacy all at a time when all, all of the people I was speaking to at that time, like all the people I was coaching through that time, those were the major points. And I think what you offered either by instinct or just, you know, your experience and who you are and what you bring to your business, you nailed all of them, Rama. Sorry. You really did. I I <laughs> for my past self, I didn't I, know all this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like, I think, you know, I'd love to share stories like this, Rama, because again, it's like the whole thing, like, oh my gosh, if Rama can do that, I can do that. Right. Like that in inspiration we want to give everybody listening to be like, oh yeah, oh, wait a second. What do people need right now? Like, what are people complaining about the most? What is the hardest thing for them right now? And what joy can I bring to that? What if my experience, my expertise, and my talents, what can I bring to this? And I think what you did was just a perfect example of how we always have access to our experiences, our expertise, and our talents. And we all, right. it does not matter, right? You right. can be out in a park with no food and you have those talents. So, you know what I mean? You have all exactly. of that and access at any time. And I think, one of the reasons I was so excited to have you on the podcast is I think what you did is so inspirational to other people. And so if someone's listening and they've lost their job or spouses lost their job, there's always possibility, always. You just have to be willing to look for it. 
You do. And you have to have, like you said, that hard work ethics, I think so. And that Mm -hmm. grit and that passion. And once you have those three, you can absolutely do anything. Like you said, I could be sitting on an island and figuring out what to to eat or what to do, or, or, you know, like learn a new dance. I don't know. Whatever it is, you just have to figure it out. You know, Mm -hmm. you have to figure it out and you have to know that there's no, there's no rules. I think a big part of my business is I didn't have any rules. And if there were rules, I didn't pay attention to them (laughs) or I never followed them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, So I I think it's just based on instinct. You just do things that feel good for you and feel good for your family and work for you and, and, and don't let being perfect stop you. I think that's, that's a crutch for so many people, right? People are like, well, didn't you want to go ahead and, and do a big launch or a sales page or, you know, have people, um, you know, take a Stripe payment, which is an online credit card system, do all that type of stuff. No, no. I just wanted to do it and then figure it out as I went or figure it out afterwards. Because if you don't do it, as you know, Sarah, that feeling goes and it just Yes. Goes, yes. Right? I think that's really important, Rama. That, that's huge um, is you've got to act when you get the nudge. And it doesn't mean be like scattered and do every single no. thing that comes. But when it's, when it's been pressing, I honest to God, I would say for more than 12 hours, literally, if it's pressing yeah. through, a, through a night's sleep or through a whole day of work and it's still knocking, you need to pay attention to that. And I think you did. And as a business owner, how did your revenue end up all through COVID from before and during and after? Honestly, um, I'm happy to say that my revenue rise, this could be one of my highest revenue years that I've had Amazing. in a long time. And yeah. I will say, I'm going to be very transparent and honest because I hate to make this um, very, you know, glamorous and not real. Yes. Did I put in a little more hours than I usually do? Because I felt like this was a new part of my business and almost like a mini startup again. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. But but was, is it worth it? And, and was it worth it? And will it be worth it? Oh my gosh. Capital. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There's no question about that. And I think too, we know that because you met the need of the moment. Right. And when right. you meet the need of the moment, you will always win. Yeah. And it really was like, yes, you had a need to bring in money for your family for sure. Right. Like your business just shut down, but that wasn't the sole motivation. It was also, you took the time to figure out like, how can I help people right now? Like what else do people need from me given what I know and who I am and what my talents are? What can I put out there? And you nailed it. Like you just absolutely nailed it. And I, um, I really hope that those listening, (laughs) if you're hearing this and you're like on the edge, just go do it. Just go start. I mean, really, Rama, I think you started, you didn't have a website for this. You didn't have a sales page, like you said. People paid you through Venmo. Yes. And then you dealt with it and you just made it happen. And for anyone who says, oh, I couldn't do that because I'm a perfectionist, what you want to understand is that is an absolute lie. Sorry, I'm just going to call it what it is, but it's a lie. Because the only way you can perfect something is if you actually get it out there and see what's not perfect. (laughs) You in your own head thinking you've got it perfect, that is never going to be anywhere near what people need. And you can't anticipate the responses you're going to get until you get it out into somebody else's hands and they can give you honest feedback. So saying I can't launch because I'm a perfectionist is a lie. If you're a perfectionist, you would actually get it out faster so you can actually perfect it. So just a little side note there. That is amazing. That's an amazing way to think about that. I was talking to a friend last night about it. And I said, honestly, I'm not going to even look at my systems and processes right now of how I'm, you know, getting the classes out there or, you know, giving the final recipes to students. I'm going to look at it after one whole year of doing it so I can learn how to make it better, what do people need and you know, and, and kind of fine tweak it all, but I'm going to give myself a year. I mean, that's part of the self care, right? And so self, yes. um, self-care in your business, be kind to yourself, take, mm-hmm. take the time to, to learn and, and figure it out and, and make the mistakes and then go back and fix them. Yes. Yeah. And I also want to talk about too, talking about self-care, like you said, not only is it self-care, it's actually responsible, right? Because you yes. get different people, you get different responses and you can actually look yes. at it over time. So it's actually responsible for you to do too. But we should also talk about like what happened in August for you. Mm-hmm. Like you've done this massive push, right? Like you yes. were amazing. You matched your revenue. You totally like took the yes. ball and ran with it in the middle of a pandemic yes. and you did all this stuff and then you hit a wall. Yeah. And I really love how you 
decided to take care of yourself through that. Can you share a little bit about that with us? Sure. Yeah. So I, um, I, I think I just ran with it, right? Like I'm telling you guys, I think you hear it in my voice right now. I ran with it and come August, the kids are still home, which I dearly love my children, three kids. Um, they're still home. We're home all the time. I am cooking and cleaning like a mad woman. I am exhausted with everything that's going on in the world, social justice, our political situation that it was kind of like a snowball effect. It, it, mm. it hit me so bad in August. I was literally burnt out. I couldn't even speak. I had a migraine every night, which is on mm. my feet oh. for two weeks. I was just beside myself, you know, crying randomly, tearing up. I mean, I can't believe I'm sharing this publicly. But it's, but, but it's uh, real life, it right? It. Yeah. Real like life. people need yeah. to know what really happens, right? When yeah, we work exactly, really hard. Yeah, exactly. And, and I had, I had never had those feelings before in my Mm. business. You know, I've had exhaustion, but this was a different type of exhaustion and a different type of, you know what, this word is used a lot, burnout, right? I burned out and it was a burnout that I have never experienced. So of course I check in with, you know, my family, I, um, you know, have some really great phone calls with friends and things like that. And I give myself permission to take time off. I give myself permission, finally take some time off. And I did, I, I worked part-time for two weeks and then I took a whole 10 days off. So practically the whole August, I must've worked for 15 hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I came back stronger, inspired, excited. My private chef clients have come back to me So great. and, um, I have fit them in my schedule and I'm doing that from home actually with the whole COVID situation. Mm-hmm. So I have the revenue back from my private chef clients. And I have the virtual cooking classes as well as another stream of revenue. So great. And so with, with, with doing this and then taking the time off, wow, I couldn't have planned it better, which I didn't plan by the way, but you know what I mean? (laughs) I do. Well, I really, one of the reasons I wanted you to share that is I think it's important for people to understand that even during a big push, Yes. Right. And that adrenaline will carry us for a long time. And I know we talked about it during coffee with coach too, right? I talked to people, I said, listen, the hormones are gone now. Like we had the adrenaline, we had the dopamine, we had the, okay, let's, we're all in this together. And then our brains literally got exhausted. I mean, I think what you went through in August, the reason I wanted you to share is I think a lot of people went through it in August. And I think the heartache and the horror and the upset that we all felt over the social injustice that had been on display for a while, but got uncovered in a new way and understood in a new way and in a new depth, it was devastating, right? So we had all of COVID. (laughs) You had this massive pivot. We had this social unrest. It's like, of course, that's what happened, right? Right. Right. And recognizing, just like you said, recognizing the situation for what it was when COVID hit, going, holy cow, but then you have to actually respond accordingly. And what you did, and I hope, again, people listening, this is like giving yourself permission, right? And no one's going to do that but you. You have to give yourself permission to go, holy, I'm exhausted. Like, this is not, I don't do this. I don't get migraines. I don't want to, like, no, something's wrong. And actually addressing it, and then you came back even better. Yes. I think that's such a valuable lesson for people to hear and witness. And here you are, you're right back at it. Your virtual classes are happening. You've got your personal clients back. So not only did you survive the pandemic really well and end up increasing your revenue, you added a whole new revenue stream to your business. Right. Right. And you got all your customers back from before. It's like, there you go. And you guys, that's what's possible when I say, you know, the game is on like, let's do this. Like, what are you waiting for? This is what we're talking about. And it looks like this. Sometimes it looks like a huge push. And sometimes it looks like taking August off. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I mean, it was a total opposite. Same thing. It was the, uh, like, I was on the opposite ends of the spectrum in a yeah. matter of like six months. And in August, when I took the time off, I, I promised myself that when I got back in working full time, I would make sure that I add that self-care angle, which I hadn't been doing from March onwards, I actually threw it out the window because the kids were home and et cetera, that I added back. I added that back in, in, in my life. And maybe that's why I got burnt out so badly because I forgot about me for a little bit. I thought about wannabe chef. I thought about my children. I thought about my, my husband. I thought of my mm. family but I didn't think about Rama, you know? Yeah. So I think adding that self-care coming back to it all really was a game changer for me right now. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so common for us as women, moms, wives, right. To do that. 
where it's like, oh, you know, I always joke around about that. Like you ask a mom or a wife or a woman, business owner, how are you? And they'll rattle off about everybody in their family. Well, my kids are doing this. This is happening over here. That, and you're like, no, how are you? And they're like, what? <laughs> it's like, I don't know how to answer yes. that. And I think it's yeah. really common. I think we really yes. do that often. So, I mean, I think it's just an incredible recognition. So thank you so much for sharing that. I know we, oh, I didn't prep her for that, you guys, no. just so okay. you know. I didn't, I wasn't like, hey, by no, the way, let's talk no, about, no. but I think it's really important for people to hear the truth about the reality of success, right? Like yeah. you're still yeah. a person. Of it's not like, cause you had a whole bunch of success. Had. You're made yeah. of titanium no, <laughs> or no, something, right? No. <laughs> and it's for the long haul, right? So if mm-hmm. I don't if I don't do that again, let's just say that, but I won't get burnt up. Let's just say if I don't add that two weeks off, you know, every six weeks, then I know where I'm going to get back to. So it's like I had that had to happen for me to realize that it's okay to do and everybody survived. All my cooking class didn't survive you know, the people who worked for me survived. We're all okay. Cause I took the time off. Can I be so honest good. with you, Sarah? When coaches Please. tell you, <laughs> and it's not against you, but when coaches say, Oh, take a month off and you'll be recharged and you'll come back and everything will be just fine. I never used to believe that ever. I was I know. Like, that's, that's kind of BS. They're lying. Cause <laughs> my business needs, needs me and it won't, I won't be able to pay the, yeah, I won't be able to pay the bills and I won't be able to function. I thought it was a load of CRAP. You know what I mean? I do. <laughs> but, Cause I remember your reaction. Yes, what? I was yes, like, just, you're, you'll yeah, be fine. Try it. <laughs> and I was fine. So yeah. And I was fine and I am fine. So it worked. It worked. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, all right. So where do you want to go next? Like, I know you love to teach people in the kitchen. Like you kind of love to go back to basics. Can you share a little bit about that? And then I want to talk about, you know, what you have to offer everybody who's listening. So exciting. Yeah, so you. tell us about, about what's next for you. Yeah. So I have some exciting projects actually coming up right now, um, which I will share eventually, but not right now. But part of the exciting project is basically bringing the family dinner table back. It is so very important for us. I mean, now more than ever, right? I think we all know that is, is really sitting down with your family around a great meal that you have cooked with your own hands or with the help of your children, right? Or your husband or your wife, um, that you've cooked with your own hands and that you're serving to yourself and others that you love and then creating those memories around the family dinner table, that's usually the time where you share what's going on in the day, your frustrations, your, your happy moments. Um, but that won't happen unless you get into the kitchen, cook smarter, not harder. Like I always say, (laughs) and bring that food on your table and sit around and enjoy it. And I think the lack of family dinners have had a profound effect on society. So I think bringing that back in is extremely important. And look, Mm -hmm. I get it, Sarah. We all have kids, soccer practice, dance practice. We get it. But you can't tell me that you can't make that happen three to five times a week. If there's No, I agree. Well, and it's interesting. I remember, I I mean, doing the virtual cooking classes with you, right? And like I said, the whole family got excited every Wednesday night. They were like, oh my God, it's cooking day. (laughs) Like, oh my God, we're going to eat something amazing tonight. Um, And we did. Every recipe was amazing. But um, I would go for walks after that, right? Or my husband and I would go for walks or whatever. And it was so interesting to see during the quarantine time. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to cry. But like all of the living rooms and all the the family rooms you could see in homes where the lights were on and everyone was home together. And I thought, I don't think I've ever seen this before. Yeah. And that made me so sad. And you know, we all called it the great pause. And I kept saying to all of us, right? Like, let's remember what we love about this. And I, I really appreciate you saying this because putting people back at the family dinner table is important. And we had that opportunity during quarantine. And it's one of the things I'm with you. I don't want to let go of. <laughs> I really don't. And, and you yes. shouldn't. Yeah. And, and shouldn't. yes, the schedules are crazy again, but um, it's not like it was before. Right. And I hope we can all hang on to that. So I appreciate that, that you're doing that. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. And you know, that's what I'm here for, for my clients and, and my students, it's basically teaching you how to not get exhausted in the kitchen and then how to get that, that food that you're making, 
you know, quick and efficiently and smart and, and delicious and all those great adjectives to describe it. Um, but it's, <laughs> but it's actually sitting down and enjoy it with your family, right? It's yes. Standing up and shoving it in your mouth or, you know, cooling it down and putting it in the freezer and then yeah. enjoying it when you can, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it's, that's, that's really my whole goal. I mean, that's, that was my biggest childhood takeaway in the culinary world, you know, we ate as a family every day together with two parents who worked full time and they had their own business as well. So, you know, they know the grind. Um, but that's really kind of what brought us together and keeps us together till today. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Roma, that's so great. Well, listen, can you share with us? Um, and you guys, there's going to be links to this on the show notes page because you're going to want to go get it. But <laughs> can you share with us what you wanted to offer the Game on Girlfriend community? Sure. So I have um, a whole schedule of virtual cooking classes that are live and um, they're going on right now. But if you go ahead um, to the show notes, obviously you see my website there and it's updated every single month with the new classes. I also have, um, I also have a course um, called the ultimate guide to plant powered cooking in an Instapot. And uh, that is a real labor of love. Um, I actually uh, did that course with my mom, who is a chef as well now and has joined me in my business, which was an important part that I forgot to mention um, last year. And um, that course is available to just your listeners because it's not on launch mode right now. So if anyone wants that, they can personally reach out to me as well. Awesome. Um, that is exciting. I'm on social, and I'm on social, Instagram and Facebook. Awesome. So give us your handle on Instagram real quick. And of course we'll have it on the show notes too, but just in case someone's listening, right. they want to pop it in real quick. Want to be chef. So want to be chef. All one love word, it. double E. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Rama, thank you so much for being on the podcast with me today. I've loved talking to you and I think you might've just inspired a whole bunch of people to get out there and do more stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs>